Welcome, let's talk about serial killers. My name is Shish Merweather and I'm the founder of Crime Viral Online. Today I will be doing what I do best, which is talking about serial killers. In this video, we are going to look at why serial killer victims are symbolic. And who better to explain this than myself, a serial killer? No, I'm kidding, for now, even though this has been a very testing year. Most experts have realised that serial killers fantasise about their perfect victim long before the murder takes place. This is a trait that only organised serial killers possess. Those who stalk and haunt their prey, searching for that perfect victim to fuel these sadistic, sordid fantasies. The race, gender, age, physical characteristics and sometimes even profession of the fantasy victim are deeply internalised within the serial killer's mind. So much so that they might not even realise themselves that they have a particular type until after the murders. An investigator or a psychiatrist might point out that all of their victims fit a certain pattern. Because there is no such thing as a perfect victim, the serial killer can't go out and find someone who fits their exact fantasy. They will generally seek out a victim who has similar traits. They will often stalk a victim first and then strike only when they feel confident enough to go through with a murder. Professor of Psychology Marissa Harrison found 65.4% of male serial killers stalk their victims compared to only 3.6% of female serial killers. If you think of this divide as male serial killers hunt for their victims, whereas female serial killers gather their victims, female serial killers will often already know the victim personally. They usually kill to gain money, collect life insurance, or inheriting property, for example. Whereas male serial killers tend to kill for power, or if female serial killers do kill for power, a male partner is usually involved also. Male serial killers kill for that power because they feel deprived of it. So they can reach this normal state they want to kill so they can raise their own self-esteem. Serial killer victims are symbolic because they trigger these internalized embarrassed memories of feeling rejected, taunted, threatened or abused that continue to enrage the killer. Memories of humiliation therefore run deep, depriving them of self-esteem a sort of sense of self-control and feelings of accomplishment, they don't get past it, instead the humiliation festers in their mind and feeds this view of a hostile world that hinders them and justifies payback. The serial killer then strikes out in an attempt to decrease this rage, but since the victim is not the offending person they have in mind, there is no resolution so the murders continue again and again. The killer does not always make the association between these internalised memories and what they are currently doing. They are just overwhelmed by this urge to strike out and they cannot seem to resist that temptation. Let's look at serial killer Ted Bundy for example. He met his first girlfriend when he attended the University of Washington and was drawn to her social status and the fact that she came from a wealthy family. Eventually she dumped him as she found his lack of realistic long-term goals frustrating. It is typical of a psychopath to drift aimlessly through life. Bundy drifted from university to university, one year studying Chinese, the next year studying law. He was unable to hold down a job long-term. This rejection of a narcissist is what many psychologists have recognised as one of Bundy's main urges to kill, revenge. Who Bundy's victims physically were is why he selected them. He was a sophisticated killer who had a type. Pretty college aged girls with long brown hair parted in the middle. If you line up all of his victims, they are very much a carbon copy of his ex-girlfriend and were also in the prime of their lives. Serial killer David Berkowitz, also known as Son of Sam, was adopted when he was just three days old. He was later told as a very young child, around three years old, that his biological mother had died whilst giving birth to him. Berkowitz said, I always believed she had died and I had this feeling constantly that I caused her death. 
His adoptive father was away from the family home for a long time, and up until the age of 10 years old, he shared a bed with his adoptive mother. He was very attached to her, and he resented his father whenever he returned home and took her attention away from him. In an interview later from Behind Bars, Berkowitz said, I always resented him quite a bit because I wanted to be with my mother. I resented my father because he had my mother. He would make me leave the room whenever they wanted to be alone and I felt deprived. Age 14 years old, his adoptive mother died of breast cancer, which was extremely difficult for him as he was now suffering the loss of a mother twice in his young life. Then age 22 years old, Berkowitz discovered that his biological mother was actually alive. What he did was he tracked her down, believing there would be this emotional, heartwarming reunion. However, that was not a reality. She really was not interested in a relationship with her son. She wanted nothing to do with him. Berkowitz then fell into a fantasy world of power and possession. So during the mid-1970s, Berkowitz sought after young female victims. He said that he was most attracted to killing women with long, dark, wavy hair. He infamously committed some of his attacks whilst the women sat with their boyfriends in their parked cars. He shot the women first and the boyfriends were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. He killed six victims and wounded 10 others. He achieved a sense of achievement from these attacks, often returning to the scenes of the crimes later to masturbate. As his victims were symbolic, the long dark wavy hair, many women in New York City kept themselves safe by cutting their hair short and dyeing it blonde. Serial killer Samuel Little is the most prolific serial killer in US history. Little confessed to killing 93 victims across several states between 1970 and 2005. He was raised by his grandmother and claimed that his mother worked, in his words, as a rotten prostitute. Little was able to avoid capture for almost four decades. He selected female sex workers and drug addicts who were vulnerable as he believed these deaths would go unnoticed. A former boxer, Little would knock out his victims cold with one punch and then strangle them. Many of his victims' deaths were then ruled as overdoses or accidental or undetermined causes. Some of the bodies were also never found. Due to his vivid memory that allows him to recall the faces of his victims, Little has sketched many portraits, and this has proved successful in identifying at least two victims to date. Targeting sex workers is common for these types of organized serial killers. One of the most difficult things for a serial murderer is the initial abduction, to convince a victim to go along with them. With sex workers, that problem is eliminated, as it is part of their job description to go along with strangers. There is also no doubt of this symbolic significance in Little's mind when it comes to sex workers based on the neglect of his own mother, who is in that same line of work. Many serial killers rationalize in their mind that they are cleansing the world of these type of women. Sex workers then can often symbolize fear, anger, and many other vulnerable emotions that the serial killer has attached to their own sexuality. A particular victim can also trigger a serial killer's psychosocial stresses, that powerful trigger that they have in their mind that flicks that switch. Serial killer Ed Kemper killed his grandparents, his mother, and his mother's friend. He also killed six female college students, which gained him the name the Co-Ed Killer. Throughout his childhood, he had a very domineering and controlling mother who would often berate him. By the time he was 10 years old, he was already a giant for his age, at least a foot taller than the other children. And his mother was worried that he would overpower and molest his sister. So from this, she locked him in a cold, dark basement at night, and a young Kemper could hear his mother and sister laughing, joking upstairs, whilst he was left to feel dirty and dangerous in the basement, although he had done nothing wrong. Following the murder of his grandparents, he was released from a psychiatric hospital, and he was sent back home to live with his mother, and this had fatal results. 
She worked at the local college and was very popular with the female students there. She came across as warm, friendly and caring. So this obvious trigger for Kemper, a seething rage that he was receiving a completely different treatment behind closed doors, he eventually sought out this particular type of victim, young female college students. Finally, his murderous rampage came to an end when he killed his own mother. He bludgeoned her to death as she laid in bed and he also pinned her head up against the wall and screamed at this repeatedly. There is also a lot more graphic detail behind that murder if you wish to research it more on a private computer in your own home. Now serial killers and mass murders are still relatively taboo subjects, however the more we research and the more we talk about this, it can potentially save lives. That's my excuse anyway for this morbid fascination. So thank you very much for watching this video today, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, feel free to comment below with any suggestions for future videos and we'll see you next week for more serial killer videos.